All right, so what we have here is two halves of the Subaru 2.5i block. And what you'll find is that your cylinders are numbered one, three, two, and four. Right now I am sizing the rings for the piston. This is piston number one for cylinder number one. And if you look up top right there, you can see there is a little bit of a gap. And we want to make sure that that gap is the correct spec, which is why we have this manual, which I wound up printing off. And you can see that the top ring, which is the one that I'm specking out right now, is supposed to be between 0.2 2.35 millimeters. So we take our gauge and this one is 0.356. I'm gonna go ahead and try that out. That's the gap right there and it will not fit in there. I've got the ring set squarely and it will not go in. This is 0.356. The largest it can be is 0.35. So that's a good sign. I'm just gonna go ahead and jump down to 0.254 millimeters, which is this guy, and that fits in between. So the bottom, now it's still, it's a little bit, there's a little bit of grab in there. There's a little bit of grab. So that tells me this isn't spec. Now it does say that there is a uh, one millimeter uh, maximum limit. So this gap can actually be a full millimeter. Clearly if uh, the rings touch, then that is not gonna be in spec. Okay, so here I've got the top rings all put about halfway down into the cylinder, squarely uh, pushed in with the piston, and I have made sure that they are within spec using the feeler gauge and I've done them all at the same time because uh, you have to keep flipping through the dang feeler gauge so you want to do them all at one fell swoop. Now I'm going to go ahead and do ring number two or the second ring uh, and go ahead and put them in all the pistons and make sure that this, the different spec is correct on those. All right now I've got ring number two just just set just on the inside there and what you want to do is you want to make sure that that is square and that it is kind of towards the middle of this cylinder. The reason being because most of your movement happens right in here. So we want to make sure that that is square in there. So we're going to take our piston and just go ahead and stick that in. And kind of just feel it to make sure that it's about, about square and in the center. And this is what we have. There is our gap. And this has its own spec, 0.37 to 0.52. So I'm gonna go ahead and do this for all of them. All right, I've got the second ring in all of the cylinders, and I'm gonna measure that gap. I've got the specs, and this should be just a little bit bigger. And I'm gonna just go ahead and check. And that won't slide up in there. Same with that. Same with that one. And this one. Now this is just a little bit smaller. And we're right underneath the upper threshold, so this might slip in. And we've got nice tight tolerances there. All right, still just a little bit smaller. All right, just a little bit smaller. And there I'm feeling it start to get a little bit. If I push, maybe it might make it a little bit unangled. And that's a 0.457 millimeters. 
So that's right in the middle, and it's getting tight. Go down to 0.432, and I presume this is going to start sliding in between these guys and be real tight. That one's real tight. And fits in. All right, and the 0 0.406 feeler gauge, and this is where it's gonna start just sliding in there. That one's getting tight. It's a little bit tighter than all the rest of them. And if I go down any further than this, I'm gonna get into hot dog down a hallway territory, so we're just gonna continue on. Here we have a completely assembled piston with all the rings. Uh, I started with this thing being naked, working my way down from the bottom. Put on your expander oil ring first, and then the bottom oil ring, and then the slide stopping oil ring on top of it. And that gives you focus, I believe in you. And that gives you that nice you can see this little, uh, if I can get my pointer, you can see there is a little tab that keeps that top ring from spinning. And they put a pretty good amount of pressure on the expander ring. Next you are going to put your second ring on and then finally the top ring. Now the top ring and the second ring, you want them to be, you want the gaps to be 180 degrees opposed. So here I have the gap and the gap on the other side. All right guys, and there we have it. Four pistons with properly specced rings sitting in front of their respective cylinders. There's three, one, two and four and of course this is going to be mated with this pretty soon that's all for tonight